Good morning. morning. Let's begin this service with singing. We'll begin today with hymn number 299, the words of which are a poem by our beloved leader, Mary Baker Eddy. Saw ye my Savior, heard ye the glad sound, felt ye the power of the word? Twas the truth that made us free and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord. Mourner, it calls you, come to my bosom. Love wipes your tears all away and will lift the shade of gloom and for you make radiant room midst the glories of one endless day. Sinner, it calls you, come to this fountain, cleanse the foul senses within. Tis the spirit that makes pure, that exalts thee and will cure all thy sorrow and sickness and sin. Strongest deliverer, friend of the friendless, life of all being divine. Thou the Christ and not the creed, thou the truth in thought and deed, thou the water, the bread, and the wine. Hymn 299. scriptural selections from the Gospel of Luke. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, 
Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. When it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners, excuse me, into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem, saying, The Lord is risen. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Please join in a few moments of silent prayer, and then pray together the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook.
Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love over all and all. Please join in singing hymn number 408. Prayer with our waking thought ascends, great God of light to thee. Darkness is banished in the glow of thy reality. Hymn 408. On behalf of the members of this church, welcome to our service. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the First Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. Please join us at 8 p.m. on Wednesday evenings for meetings in which members of the congregation share healings and experiences resulting from the application of Christian science. Our Wednesday meetings, as well as these Sunday services, are broadcast on Zoom and available on YouTube. Access information is posted on the bulletin board in the foyer. In our Sunday school, which also begins at 10 a.m., children and teenagers learning to apply the Bible and the writings of Mary Baker Eddy to their daily challenges. In our reading room, you may study, borrow, or purchase the Bible, the Christian Science textbook, and other Christian Science literature, including the Christian Science Monitor, an international weekly news magazine. The reading room is open after every Sunday service and before each Wednesday evening meeting or by appointment anytime convenient for you. 
you are always welcome to join us at our services, to use the reading room, and to bring children to Sunday school. We also invite you to visit our website, our YouTube recordings, or our Facebook page. Access information is posted in the foyer. Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural text and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson for today begins on page 20 of the Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, probation after death. The golden text is from James. Let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The responsive reading is from Isaiah and from 1 Thessalonians. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. 
for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Be at peace among yourselves. Be patient toward all men. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. The following citations comprise our sermon. I'll read from the Bible. Psalms. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. 1 Corinthians, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Proverbs. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof, there is no death. As announced in the explanatory note, I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Life is deathless. Life is the origin and ultimate of man, never attainable through death, but gained by walking in the pathway of truth both before and after that which is called death. Mortals need not fancy that belief in the experience of death will awaken them to glorified being. Universal salvation rests on progression and probation and is unattainable without them. Progress is born of experience. It is the ripening of mortal man through which the mortal is dropped for the immortal. Either here or hereafter, suffering or science must destroy all illusions regarding life and mind and regenerate material sense and self. God requires perfection, but not until the battle between spirit and flesh is fought and the victory won. When we wait patiently on God, and seek truth righteously, he directs our path. Imperfect mortals grasp the ultimate of spiritual perfection slowly, but to begin aright and to continue the strife of demonstrating the great problem of being is doing much. Emerge gently from matter into spirit. Think not to thwart the spiritual ultimate of all things but come naturally into spirit through better health and morals and as a result of spiritual growth. Not death, but the understanding of life makes man immortal. Proverbs. There is a way that seemeth right 
unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Second Samuel. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. And Hushai said unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel fell. And when Ahithophel said, saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself and died, and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. Ezekiel, cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For I have no patience, pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Proverbs. Wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Death is not a stepping stone to life, immortality, and bliss. If the principal rule and demonstration of man's being are not in the least understood before what is termed death overtakes mortals, they will rise no higher spiritually in the scale of existence on account of that single experience, but will remain as material as before the transition, still seeking happiness through a material instead of through a spiritual sense of life and from selfish and inferior motives. If the change called death destroyed the belief in sin, sickness, and death, happiness would be won at the moment of dissolution and be forever permanent. But this is not so. Perfection is gained only by perfection. They who are unrighteous shall be unrighteous still until, in divine science, Christ, truth, removes all ignorance and sin. The sin and error which possess us at the instant of death do not cease at that moment, but endure until the death of these errors. To be wholly spiritual, man must be sinless, and he becomes thus only when he reaches perfection. The murderer, though slain in the act, does not thereby forsake sin. He is no more spiritual for believing that his body died and learning that his cruel mind died not. His thoughts are no purer until evil is disarmed by good. As death findeth mortal man, so shall he be after death 
until probation and growth shall affect the needed change. The purpose and motive to live aright can be gained now. This point one, you have started as you should. You have begun at the numeration table of Christian science, and nothing but wrong intention can hinder your advancement. Working and praying with true motives, your Father will open the way. Psalms, wait on the Lord and keep us and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Proverbs, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Romans, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 Timothy, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Philippians, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Work out your own salvation is the demand of life and love. For to this end, God worketh with you. Occupy till I come. Wait for your reward and be not weary in well-doing. Good demands of man every hour in which to work out the problem of being. We apprehend life and divine science only as we live above corporeal sense and correct it. Our proportionate admission of the claims of good or of evil determines the harmony of our existence, our health, our longevity, and our Christianity. It is the spiritualization of thought and Christianization of daily life, in contrast with the results of the ghastly farce of material existence, it is chastity and purity in contrast with the downward tendencies and earthward gravitation of sensualism and impurity which really attest the divine origin and operation of Christian science. In science, all being is eternal, spiritual, perfect, harmonious in every action. Let the perfect model be present in your thoughts instead of its demoralized opposite. This spiritualization of thought lets in the light and brings the divine mind, life, not death, into your consciousness. The way is straight and narrow, which leads to the understanding that God is the only life. It is a warfare with the flesh in which we must conquer sin, sickness, and death either here or hereafter, certainly before we can reach the goal of spirit or life in God. Psalms, my soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Romans, the gift of God 
is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Matthew. There came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw the minstrels and the people making a noise. He said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand. And the maid arose. First Corinthians. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the name of the man who, more than all other men, has presented Christ, the true idea of God, healing the sick and the sinning and destroying the power of death. The fact that the Christ, or truth, overcame and still overcomes death, proves the king of terrors to be but a mortal belief or error, which truth destroys with the spiritual evidences of life. And this shows that what appears to the senses to be death is but a mortal illusion, for to the real man and the real universe, there is no death process. Life is real and death is the illusion a demonstration of the facts of soul in Jesus' way resolves the dark visions of material sense into harmony and immortality. To divest thought of false trust and material evidences in order that the spiritual facts of being may appear, this is the great attainment by means of which we shall sweep away the false and give place to the true. The great spiritual fact must be brought out that man is, not shall be, perfect and immortal. That life is not contingent on bodily, on bodily conditions is proved when we learn that life and man survive this body. Neither evil, disease, nor death can be spiritual, and the material belief in them disappears in the ratio of one's spiritual growth. Become conscious for a single moment that life and intelligence are purely spiritual, neither in nor of matter, and the body will then utter no complaints. If suffering from a belief in sickness, you will find yourself suddenly well. Sorrow is turned into joy when the body is controlled by spiritual life, truth, and love. Every day makes its demands upon us for higher proofs rather than professions of Christian power. These proofs consist solely in the destruction of sin, sickness, and death by the power of spirit as Jesus destroyed them. This is an element of progress. And progress is the law of God, whose law demands of us only what we can certainly fulfill. 1 Corinthians For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Mark. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Afterward, 
He appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Acts. He showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days in speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. The Bible calls death an enemy and Jesus overcame death and the grave instead of yielding to them. He was the way. To him, therefore, death was not the threshold over which he must pass into living glory. To show that the substance of himself was spirit and the body no more perfect because of death and no less material until the ascension, his further spiritual exaltation, Jesus waited until the mortal or fleshly sense had relinquished the belief of substance matter and spiritual sense had quenched all earthly longings. Jesus' unchanged physical condition after what seemed to be death was followed by his exaltation above all material conditions. And this exaltation explained his ascension and revealed unmistakably a probationary and progressive state beyond the grave. Jesus was the way, that is, he marked the way for all men. In his final demonstration, called the Ascension, which closed the earthly record of Jesus, he rose above the physical knowledge of his disciples and the material senses saw him no more. Like our master, we must depart from material sense into the spiritual sense of being. Paul writes, if Christ, truth, be not risen, then is our preaching vain. That is, if the idea of the supremacy of spirit, which is the true conception of being, come not to your thought, you cannot be benefited by what I say. Jesus said substantially, he that believeth in me shall not see death. That is, he who perceives the true idea of life loses his belief in death. He who has the true idea of good loses all sense of evil, and by reason of this is being ushered into the undying realities of spirit. Such a one abideth in life, life obtained not of the body, incapable of supporting life, but of truth, unfolding its own immortal idea. Jesus gave the true idea of being which results in infinite blessings to mortals. Psalms. He that is our God is the God of salvation, and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. Hebrews, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that 
after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. 1 John and this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. Life is eternal. We should find this out and begin the demonstration thereof. Life and goodness are immortal. Mortals are not like immortals, created in God's own image, but infinite spirit being all mortal consciousness will being all mortal consciousness will at last yield to the scientific fact and disappear and the real sense of being perfect and forever intact will appear when the last mortal fault is destroyed then the final trump will sound which will end the battle of truth with error and mortality but of that day and hour knoweth no man here, prophecy pauses. Divine science alone can compass the heights and depths of being and reveal the infinite. Beholding the infinite task of truth, we pause, wait on God. Then we push onward until boundless thought walks enraptured and conception unconfined is winged to reach the divine glory. Our last hymn this morning is number 381. What brightness dawned in resurrection and shone in Mary's wondering eyes. Her heart was thrilled with new affection. She saw her Lord in life arise. In 381. What brightness 
I'll read the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John, third chapter. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.